on Twitter. If you're watching, however it is that you're watching, uh, make sure to be subscribed here to the channel. Make sure to turn on notifications so you get notified every single time that we go live here. Uh, we do appreciate all the support, and we got 8,000 subscribers here on the channel now. So thank you guys very much for that as well. Uh, let's get into it here for what we've got from tonight. I mean, I saw a lot of people buzzing in the chat early. Uh, also, it looks like we may have been delayed going on to YouTube there. Apologies if we were. You didn't miss anything off the open but uh, we should be good here on the stream now. Should be good on the stream. Uh, I was just ch checking, trying to make sure I, everything had figured it itself out. I think that it's okay now. Yeah, all right. Uh, there you go. Uh, anyways, as for tonight, I mean, this team now moves to 42-22-9 uh, and nine on the season. I do apologize for missing last game against Washington. I hope that everything went well with Jason there. Looks like he had a pretty good show. We appreciate everyone who watched that one. Uh, obviously, I wasn't able to make it to last show, given the fact that uh, I was playing in my men's league final. We play Fridays all season long, and then at the very end of the year, championships are like, yeah, you know what? Thursdays it is because... Good Friday, so fair enough, but have to move over. And uh, yeah, I was not able to uh, able to do the stream, but appreciate Jason who did an uh, incredible, incredible job there. So thanks to Jason for filling in. As for tonight's game, a uh, bunch of different stuff. I was able to write down a lot uh, during this one. TJ Brody, 900th career game. I think he had a pretty quiet night, which, again, that's good for me because over the last little while when I've been watching TJ Brody, it's frustrations of, of hey, you know what? This guy's not able to get things going uh, the way that you'd like him to so far this season. We saw a huge drop-off in his game. We saw a massive just kind of weight on his shoulders all year long and he was not able to kind of get himself back to the point of where he had been before where everything everything seemed to you know just be massive it seemed to be mistake after mistake after mistake that would pile up and make the previous mistake even worse and then it would just make the next one worse and worse and worse and worse and he just continued to snowball but I think that uh I, I think that as far as things went for him uh, here tonight, it was it seemed like a pretty quiet game. I think this Leafs team showed us a little bit something here tonight in the fact that they were able to get through this one not giving up any goals. You saw some stupid stuff late in the game from uh, penalty-wise, giving Buffalo opportunities. We saw some longer shifts for the Sabres out there. This one could have easily turned into a much closer game than, uh, than it actually ended up being, but... Uh, the Leafs fight through. It, you know, it, it's an away game there in Buffalo. Obviously, probably feels a little bit more like a home game, given the fact that it was so many Leafs fans in attendance tonight. But, I mean, to come away with a shutout in this one against a team that always gets up to play against you, a team that you haven't gotten up the same way that you should be uh, in the past to play, a team that has had your number over the last couple of years, a team that, as Leafs fans, we look at and say, oh, wow, we're going to play the Sabres. This one's going to suck. This one is going to be tough. You got it done. You got it done here. And you're missing Mitch Marner. You're missing Morgan Riley. Timothy Lilligren's not there. Like You got Connor Timmins on your first power play unit. And to come away with a 3 0 win felt pretty good from this for this team tonight. It felt like a good result, a good way to get it get through it. Uh I don't know. I, I'm just happy with where we came, uh, where we got got this win tonight, how everything went for this team. I see six and a third there saying, I know your face is itchy, you just shave, do it, whatever. Lost the men's league. Stay tuned to the channel here. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. Some things might be coming. Some things might be coming. I will say, as far as this game against Buffalo goes tonight, uh, there was a couple of things from Leafs forwards that I saw that I was interested in. Nick Robertson obviously gets himself on the board tonight, but that third line... Uh, you, you need some guys to come back from injury quick here. Callie Yarncroke, you'd like him to return. Mitch Marner returning. It'll it'll seriously change the depth that we're looking at because you're able to kind of come in these different rows or waves of attack with how the lines are set up right now with, with these guys split out. But as you progress and you go into the playoffs and you face tougher competition, that third line, it's not going to hold up. Uh, Pontus Holmberg did not have himself the greatest night here tonight. He wasn't necessarily a liability. He didn't stink, uh, but it was just, I don't think it was the best night from him. Now, for a younger guy who's on your third line to not have the best night, it's not like we're calling it the end of the world here, but I just kind of wanted to point out where he was at. I didn't think it was that good. Uh, Nick Robertson scores a goal, a great pass by Matthew Nyes into him, but 
I, I, again, I still I still hold true to the fact that for me, he's just a kind of a vanilla player. I don't think he's making much or makes much of a difference in this lineup every time he's in there. If you were to take him out, I don't I don't really see the, you kind of looking at this team and being like, oh wow, there's a major drop off here. So. I think you need some of these guys back. Uh, I'm, I'm not really, like, Robertson just doesn't show me a lot that I, I fall in love with. He just doesn't show me enough to be like, oh, this is a guy I need to I need to keep in the lineup. If he comes out, he comes out, and it, it is what it is. But happy for him to get a goal here tonight. It's obviously going to uh, get a feel good for a guy who's fighting for a position in the lineup. He, he's He is a goal scorer, and that's essentially all he is. I mean... I don't know. I, for for Robertson, it's just on the third line, they lack defensively. Even that shift where they scored the goal, they had some bad plays in their own zone. They made some mistakes. They had a couple of opportunities against them, and they ultimately end up just kind of getting lucky going on break the other way and are able to score. It's, uh, it's a little bit concerning for that perspective, but I, I mean, I guess with the idea of some of these guys coming back, it, it's not as worrisome, but that's kind of where I was at with them. Nick Robertson is a giveaway machine. I see late saying that, um, saying that in the chat, six and a third, bringing up, I was happy for Nick, but yes, many failed clears before that goal. Like that's kind of what they were doing, right? You're failing to clear the zone, not committing to your own blue line, getting that puck out into into the neutral zone, keeping it safe, like making a smart play where where you're at there, and it it there was there were some struggles, like there were some struggles from them where it's like at at this point you shouldn't be having some of those growing pains from them. You could experience the growing pains from guys like Matthew Nyes. You're okay with that. You could experience some growing pains from guys like uh. You know what, actually, that's kind of the extent. Joseph Wall, like, but with this team, the rest of these guys, you can't have that anymore. Bobby McMahon, adapting quickly. Pontus Holmberg, for the most part, adapting pretty quickly. I don't think these are rookie mistakes. I think maybe tonight was just a night where Pontus Holmberg wasn't 100% on his game. I just I just don't want to continue to see these guys, oh, learning, 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 learning. Like, that's... Let's, let's get things together here. Uh, Nick Robertson... You want to be an NHL player. You want to be in the league. You've been fighting for a long time to try to get there. I know he has twenty, only twenty-two, but it's still. You've had opportunities at the professional level. You played in the AHL. Those are things that need to be cleaned up and taken out of your game if you're going to be a consistent player. If you're going to be a guy who Sheldon Keith can rely upon and is going to be an impact player when it comes to the most important time of the year, which would be the playoffs, and I just don't think he's there right now. If you guys are watching and you haven't already, please hit that like button. Um, subscribe here to the channel. We did recently hit 8,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who did that. But, I mean, why not 10K by the playoffs? Like, let's get there. Let's get to 10K by the playoffs. You got to set goals. You got to set goals, right? Uh, Wilfred saying, come on, Zach, 11 and 40 games. I mean, he's a goal scorer. He should be able to score goals. But we're not talking – it's not about goal scoring – with a guy like that because he's not bringing much to anything any other part of the game like he's not bringing any other point generation he's not bringing offensive zones like sustained time in the offensive zone he's a he's a speed and burst kind of guy who jumps in and is able to make something happen every now and then off of like a rush or just kind of pops open in the zone and he's able to he's able to create something outside of that it's not very good defensive play. It's a lot of turnovers. It's a lot of giveaways. It's not committing to things in your own zone where you're at the blue line or you're near the blue line. You can't get the puck out. Can't make that kind of play, that last minute play that you are you should be able to be relied upon there where you, if you're going to be a guy that Sheldon Keith says, hey, you can be out on the ice, those are things you need to clean up. So I understand that, yeah, he's at 11 goals here now on the season and good for him, but it's still we can't just look at goals and the way that those like those stats that are being put up by him and say oh yeah this is great because there's a lot of other things missing from his game right now and a lot of things that are kind of contributing to why Sheldon Keefe and this coaching staff does not trust him yes uh Derek they're saying did they get outshot by Buffalo um yes Yuko Pekka Lukanen makes 
19 saves here tonight. The Leafs had 22 shots, and the Buffalo Sabres had 34. A bunch of those obviously come at the end of the game as Buffalo is continuing to press, which is just natural in that in that state of game where it's like, hey, we're going to turn it on here. We, it's, a, it's a tighter game. We're going to make a push. They pulled the goalie really early. There was a power. There was power plays in there as well. So, yeah, like that just it makes sense. But uh, yeah. I, I also saw the the score makes this one seem better than they looked. I disagree. I don't think that this is a game where the Sabres took it to them. I don't think that this is a game where I would say, wow, we didn't deserve to win that one tonight. Um, if you go to the deserve to win a meter, yeah, it's gonna favor it's gonna favor Buffalo there from some of the chances. But I think that those are more of the quality of some of the chances that the Sabres were cre- were creating and not really the way that the play was carried if that makes sense like yeah maybe buffalo deserved a bit of a better result here tonight but i i don't think that this was like a oh wow the leafs played like absolute dog shit they shouldn't have won whatever and the other thing that i would like to point out here is how many times do we come on the stream after the game we talk about oh that was a tough one we we deserve to win and you lost you deserve to win and you lost how often are we watching these games as Leafs fans and coming here and saying that? And tonight, we finally get an opportunity where it's like, you deserved, you'd probably deserve to win, or the deserve to win a meter says it, it should have gone the other way. You got outshot, the high danger chances went the other way. Ilya Samsonov was absolutely incredible here tonight. He gave this team an opportunity to win. Obviously, they did. He, he gives them that opportunity, that confidence back there. He was incredible, and it was just like, why can't we just be happy about the fact that tonight was one of those nights where you probably didn't deserve to win, you, at least from a deserve to win a meter perspective. Some of the chances swung in favor of the Sabres here and there where they had some really high quality chances. And you got away with the win. And not just a win, a 3 nothing shutout. Like this is an Ilya Samsonov stolen game. This is an Ilya Samsonov stolen game tonight. Let's be happy about that. Let's take solace in the fact that this team that typically doesn't deserve to win or typically comes away from these games not deserving to win was able to win. I'm happy with that. 20 more likes uh, Twenty more likes here and we get the smelling salts out on, on, on uh, the stream here. As well, the, another thing to point out is bringing up shot attempts, shots on goal. The Sabres did have six power plays tonight. This Leafs penalty kill went six for six. Six for six. Now, Sammy being an absolute monster back there is going to be a massive contributing factor to all of that. But regardless, you want, you you went six for six. Your penalty kill has looked pretty tight over the last little while. It feels like they're getting things together. Dewar out there, I think, helps. DJ Brody not being as much of a liability has helped. I think he's tightening some things up a little bit and and hasn't looked terrible on the penalty kill. You've added Edmondson, obviously, who doesn't play here tonight. You added Labushkin. McCabe seems to have stepped up his game just between some of those guys and the way that you're getting contributions offensively up front or from your offense, from your forwards uh, on the PK, the way that they're playing as well here, it's it's really looked good from that side. Now, the darker side of your special teams is going to go to your power play, who went 0 for 4 tonight and continues to struggle. It feels like every single game now we look at this team, we look at the box score and go, ooh, 1 for 5, uh, 0 for 4, uh, 0 for 2, uh, one for five, one for four, and it's like, okay, you you go one for four here and there, but if you're gonna have a power play that's just gonna go this cold for this long, right before the most important time of the season, there becomes a point where you're probably gonna have to start to say, hey, uh, this needs to change. They obviously had discussions about their penalty kill. They had discussions about some of the things that were going wrong there and why things were were problematic for this team. It's got to change on the power play. It's really got to change on the power play because this is just not being good enough from from this group. It, it feels tough to watch. It's frustrating to watch. I don't really have a, some type of answer of like, oh, this is what you do to fix this. But what I would say is one of the things that it does feel like they are missing at this point is just some level of urgency that's going on. Like why, 
why the puck just continues to move around the outside, move around, pass, 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 look for the perfect opportunity. Phenom, I I haven't checked that stat. I would assume, it feels like a right stat. Phenom bringing up uh, at least four percent on the power play, worse than the NHL since February twenty seventh. This would that would not surprise me. Uh, but <laughs> I mean. Wow. Huh. This Leafs team. This Leafs team. The power play, man. It kills me. The power play absolutely kills me every single time. It's just frustrating to watch. It just feels lax lackadaisical. It just feels like it's like, hey, we're we have better players on the ace than you do. So we are going to uh we're gonna be able to score, and that has not been the case. Uh, for these guys over the last month, last month and a bit, honestly, like as what Phenom had pointed out there, six and a third Marner is missed on the PP. I don't know. I mean, they were struggling a little bit when Marner was here as well. And to say, oh, Marner is the answer. Look, this is the same thing that the power play has done every single year in the playoffs, and guess who's on it still? This is the same thing that the power play has done down the final stretch going into the playoffs every single year, and Mitch Marner has been on it. So to say, oh, it's Mitch Marner who's going to be the difference maker, no, I don't think so. And the other thing is, if Mitch Marner being out makes your power play the worst power play in the NHL, then that is a pathetic 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 statement on who austin matthews john Tavares, and william nylander are like that is so outrageous so outrageous marner is missed on the power play that like if he is the guy who's making them the worst power play in the nhl that's fucking embarrassing for Matthews, Nylander, to, and Tavares. Because, you know what? Between those three guys, they're they're being paid $11 million, $13 million, another $11 million. Morgan Riley comes back, seven and a half, eight million dollars $8 Like, for those guys to not be able to get it done without him on the ice is so goddamn embarrassing for this team, if that's the case. And, as Palmface is saying, and as I had pointed out as well, they were in a bit of a slump before Marner went out, uh went out as well so figure it out like figure it out figure it out this you cannot you cannot blame this on like or, or say oh well when marner comes back it's going to be saved everyone else figure it out everyone else figure it out contribute who cares between the other guys that you've got on the ice then like you're fine like you should be fine even if you have a slight decrease in how your power play goes, it should not it should not change it this much. It should not be this much worse. It should not be this much worse. And for the penalty kill, saying he's missed on the penalty kill, the whole Mitch Marner is so so good and deserves so much money because he can play on the penalty kill thing, I think has been com completely completely diffused. At this point, like I think that it has been just completely diminished because you know who else is on the penalty kill right now? Austin Matthews. And you know who else is on the penalty kill? William Nylander. And they seem to be doing pretty well on the penalty kill. They seem to be doing pretty well right now. So it's kind of just taken away that whole thing. Like, I, I don't know. Are we going to get into a Marner discussion here tonight on, on this stream? Like, is this where this is going to go? Because if you if we really want to, we can also talk about that joke of a of a statement that he had in the in the media where he was talking about, oh, you guys say this, you guys can say whatever you want. What the fuck was that? Like, what was that? What was that conversation? Why is he saying, oh, you guys, say, I see what you guys are saying. You guys can say whatever you want. You can speculate on this. You can speculate on that. Why is that the most fucking pissy interview ever? You grew up in this city. You know how these guys are going to respond. That's some sad kid getting yelled at by, by his dad in the car who's giving sassy answers back because he's upset. That was, a, that was the stupidest fucking answer ever. You need to have some idea of this media and this fan base and how they how they go about things and how they handle things. And also, that whole thing was just so, so stupidly answered. Like, so stupidly answered. What the hell are you talking about with this, oh, uh, uh, 
you know, we got uh, we got a. Oh, you guys can say whatever you want about the injury. Oh, if that's what you want to think, that's what you want to think. Shut the hell up. You're a professional hockey player at 26 years old, and this is the answer that you're giving here right now because you were you were asked about your high ankle sprain, which we knew that you had, and saying if that's who you want to think it is, that's who you want to think it is. What was that? This guy, these answers, like this vendetta against the media that this guy has. Like, buddy, how about you realize that the media and your dad slipping shit to the media is probably what contributed you to you getting paid what you did. You should probably be thankful for the fucking media. Anyways, you got we we're talking about missing Marner and how this is the changing changing the power play. Like it's like it's like it's gonna make you the worst power play in the NHL. Embarrassing. That's embarrassing. That's a pathetic excuse. Yeah, he helps for sure, but to drop off and be the the worst power play in the NHL without that guy in the lineup, what the fuck are we talking about? What are we talking about? Late saying, since Marner is out, PK and PP are 28th and 30th. Power uh, Penalty kills was bad when he was still here as well. This was one of the worst penalty kills we had seen. So what are we talking about? Of, of this Leafs team, I mean. It, like, I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I cannot, for the life of me, seem to wrap my head around the conversation and the idea that, you know, this guy being out is... Uh, is that dra that drastic of a difference? Don't get it. Don't get it. Anyways, let's get out of here. I, I I mean, look, you guys want to talk about how good he is? William Nealon are gonna get fifty uh, or a hundred a uh, hundred points before he gets a hundred. Never ha never seen him get a 100-point season. William Nylander is going to get it before him. You're going to tell me you're going to pay him more money in the uh, in the offseason than what William Nylander is currently making? A guy who also plays in the penalty kill? A guy who's also on power play number one? Yeah, I don't know. Just saying. Anyways. Back to tonight's game. Not enough about, uh, not not as much about a guy who's, who weren't in the lineup. John Tavares, 1100 career game, 451st goal. That was a nice, uh, a great play by William Nylander. This is one of the guys that I look at and think about what he does in the uh, in the playoffs and how he impacts things in the playoffs. It's one of the reasons that it frustrates me on the power play why he's not the guy carrying the puck into the zone. I think he's one of, if not the best players on this Leafs team who's capable at entering the zone, breaking into the zone. Uh, the way he is able to go coast to coast, carry the puck with speed, intensity, strong, strong. It's hard to take the puck off of him. He gets into the offensive zone and is able to set it up. That's what he did there. That was obviously a five on five, but that's what he does there on that JT goal. He takes the puck from his own zone, wards off the check, is able to get his legs going, pick up speed, enters the zone, draws two sabers across to him as he draws two across, which I don't know what the hell they were doing there because there was two Leafs on the other side wide open into the zone. He dishes the puck across to Tavares, who has all the time and all the space in the world in the slot and is able to bury. Uh, that's a great shot for a guy uh, to score his 451st. Post and in there as well. You get the ping. Um, it, this one just felt good. Uh, that that felt good to see because he has that opportunity. Uh, he took some took some heat from everyone in Toronto, myself included, and I think deservingly slow, de deservingly so. There was a period of time where it basically looked like this guy just went out on the ice with cement in his boots every single game, and. Uh, the production had dropped off, and when you already have a guy who's just not a pretty player, like, he's not a, a guy that you look at, you're like, oh yeah, that guy looks, looks nice to watch. Like, 
I, I don't mean that he plays an ugly game or it's not fun to watch him play. It is, but he's not the speed and flash and go coast to coast and, and dice guys up kind of thing with moves that we see out of some of the other guys, Marner, Nealand, or Matthews. So when you kind of, I think just the casual person looks at it and looks at the contract, it's like, well, where, how are we paying this guy this? He's not a superstar. He is. He's, he is a superstar in the NHL and he, is deserve, he was deserving of the contract at the time he got paid. But there are certain things that he's really, really, really good at. And Phenom bringing up there, Def lost a step, but he's smart and is working hard. You're seeing that. Like, you're seeing that pay off because over the last little while, his 5-on-5 five five play, his 5-on-5 five five production, it's significantly gone up. Like, he's, he's done a whole lot better 5-on-5, five five, which is good because... It shows an ability to kind of stay with the play at regular speed. It shows at least just not necessarily for him. He obviously knows that. The team knows he's able to do that. But just even for the fan base to see like, wow, him scoring at five on five, we can at least get some type of picture, some idea that, you know what, he's able to do it. He's able to play because if he can get up and down the ice, if he can be involved in the play, if he can be involved in rushes like this one here tonight and be there for Nylander to get the pass across, a guy like that who can score the way that he can, who's be able to be consistent and reliable in just most other areas of play and just have that kind of pros pro mentality, you're, you're in a good place. And that was a great shot, 451st career goal, 1100th game. Fun to see, but also fun to see from William Nylander just going up and down the ice like that. Opens things up, one nothing. Also, on top of that, you guys want to talk about contracts, you want to talk about wingers, you want to talk about value to a team. William Nylander passes Matt Sundin for most points in a single season by a Swede. I don't care who you are, what you think about the guy. If you like his play, if you like his contract, if you don't like his contract, if you want, whatever. That's pretty fucking cool. Matt Sundin was my favorite player growing up. He was the reason that when I was playing, you know, minor or house league hockey, whatever, when you first start and you tim your Timbits, he's the reason that I was wearing number 13. He's the reason that I would sit in front of the TV and just stare, stare at the Leafs and just sit there admiring the way that he played the game, admiring Matt Sundin. And to watch now William Nylander, a guy who had taken so much shit from the fan base, from the media, from everybody here in Toronto, to watch him sign this contract, have the year that he's had, Take these personal developments in his game that you're seeing, you know, involving the scrums when he jumps in there into the scrum and he goes and grabs a guy and he goes and puts a guy in a headlock and pulls a guy away to watch these developments outside of just, oh, William Nylander's this skilled, lofty Swedish hockey player to $6.9 million. That's an overpay where he's now saying you're going to pay me 11.5 and deserving it. That's really fun to watch. It's pretty cool, and to see it at, uh, to see it at, um, at this level, it's really fun. Mike Batson Leafs, Leafs could have got him for nine point nine though. How? Like no, no shot. They could have got him for nine point nine. Uh, but yeah, passes Matt Sundin most points in a single season by a Swede for Leafs. We'll talk about Samsonov a little bit more in depth here, obviously, but I kind of want to just even bring up right now some of the momentum things that we saw from him tonight. That goal happens. You open the scoring, you go up one to nothing. Buffalo had an incredibly good chance very shortly after. Very shortly after, Buffalo had a very, very good opportunity, and... Sammy, great save on the rebound. I believe it was Paterka in front, tries to get the puck in uh, off the rebound. Ilya Samsonov gets across, makes a reactionary athletic save, pad down, pad save over on the back door that could have just easily changed things where, you know, we joke about it, but that is a dominant Leafs crowd in there, in Buffalo. They are passionate. They are loud, they are rowdy. They're going to drink a million beers and they're going to go to the bars after the fact those people are buzzing in Buffalo right now. They were going nuts in there when the Leafs take the lead. It feels like a home game for Toronto. 
Buffalo comes down the other way. That could have completely killed anything that you had just built for yourself where you, that game goes back and it's tied. A little bit of a mistake in your own zone, lose a, lose a defensive positioning, lose a, a situational battle, and Buffalo ties things up. Buffalo makes a, makes a great play, is able to tie things up. Ilya Samson shuts that down. He just immediately, immediately ends that one. Immediately ends it. And it gives you the opportunity there to now have momentum back on your side because you're fired up about that save by Ilya Samsonov. Again, if you guys are watching right now, hit the like button. We're four likes away from 50, which brings out the smelling salts. And why not? Why not get into the, some smelling salts here tonight? Um, as well, bringing up Tammy. It's cheaper to buy Leafs tickets in Buffalo, and it's not a long drive. Yeah, it, exactly. I mean, you buy you buy Leafs tickets in Buffalo and a hotel and gas money, and it's basically the same as going to a game in Toronto. So you might as well do that, and you can get yourself an experience. Uh or you have yourself an experience, that is. I see Late sending some line suggestions in the chat. I kind of want to address some of these. I got I to gotta find. So let's start with Late's first line because you broke them up a little bit. But uh, I don't see your first line recommendation there, Late. Uh, I mean, I guess I could probably assume it's going to involve Matthews. I see you've got, oh, second line McMinn. Or yeah, McMahon, JT, Willie will be solid in the playoffs. I agree, McMahon and JT. Uh disagree with how we'd go with about the winger there. I'm not changing this first line. I'm keeping Domi, Bertuzzi, and Matthews together. I mean, we're, we're looking ahead a little bit at the playoffs. We're looking ahead at the idea of changing some of these when guys come back and how they'll shape up. I'm not putting Mitch Marner on that first line, and it's not because he doesn't deserve to play on the first line or whatever, but I think it changes things so drastically for how other teams can match up against you. I think it really, really, really makes it harder from a depth perspective and there's a couple other things that are involved i mean we've talked about it a little bit before but it's it's uh it's marner jt mcmahon the best that Tavares has ever played here in toronto probably ever played in his career was when he was playing with mitch marner you put mitch marner on that second line with jt then I think you get those guys rocking. The other thing that we always look at, which pisses me off, is that we go to the playoffs every year and we got Marner, Matthews, and Bunting, Hyman, whoever. Like, you know, name your guy. That's the guy who fills into that role. When you when you go to the playoffs, if those guys get shut down, then the immediate problem you have is the only other line that you can see scoring is really your second line. Because that's the line with Nylander, Tavares, and, you know, name your winger, uh, Yarncroke, Kerfoot, whoever Keith has decided to put in there. It's usually a guy that he trusts a lot. So you put him on that line. You put Marner onto that line. Now your depth shakes out a little bit more. It also means that you can move Nylander to a third line. And the reason I would say this, where people are going to be like, Nylander, a third line, you're going to pay him 11 and a half, you're going to put him on the third line. Here's the thing. You're not really going with, oh, one, line one, line two, line three. You're going line one, and then you're going to shake up and mix. You're going to you're gonna mix up the minutes of lines two and three into the playoffs where they don't have to be your traditional one gets this amount, two gets this amount, three gets this amount. You could have one, and they take the most dominant minutes, and then you could take the other two, and you can make it a, 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 a 2A and a 2B where... You can kind of even the minutes out. You can determine who the matchup is and how they go up against somebody and who you want in that position. Who do you want going out on the ice against a certain matchup? Who is it that you want going out on the ice to face against, uh, you know, you go into you go into the playoffs and you face the Bruins. Okay, you get through the Pasternak line uh, and now you look down to the second line. You could change based on whether that line is defensive, if that line is an offensive line. Do you want to go offense versus offense? Do you want to go a defensively minded line? So I think that's good. Then I also think Nylander on your third line, let's call it. Like we're doing air quotes on the third line because I don't think it actually makes it a third line. And what I think ends up happening if Nylander goes there, it opens his game up so much. Watch Nylander and the way that he plays. He's not like a Batman Robin type of guy. Like 
Mitch Marner and John Tavares, that was Batman and Robin. Nylander does not work with Tavares the same way. Like, Nylander and Tavares, they scored here tonight, but it's not like those two guys is something that creates, creates, creates. And I feel like they are not the most compatible duo. When we've gone to the playoffs every year, if that Marner Matthews line doesn't work, now you're putting Nylander up onto the first line to try to get them going. Or you're putting Tavares on the first line to get them going, which makes your second line worse, which makes your third line worse, which makes, right? And then everyone else just kind of diminishes a little bit and everyone else gets a little bit worse as you go through the rest of the roster. If you put Mitch Marner and Tavares together there, first you keep the first line, which has a very clear identity. Max Domi. Playmaker, incredible playmaker. Think, look at this game tonight where you know what we lost our bet. We lose the Max Domi. Uh, we lose the Max Domi anytime assist, but we can still at least take solace in the fact that they produced a lot. They generated a, a good amount of chances, and Domi always seems to know where Matthews is. Even to the point where Matthews, like every now and then, he looks surprised that Domi was able to find him. Like Domi was able to get the puck to him. Plus, as we saw here in this game tonight, this guy is a little shit. You know, goes into the scrums, gets involved. He'll stick guys. He'll cross check guys. He'll battle in the corners. He'll win battles. He'll win. He'll win corner battles. He wins. Da- the one of the most important things is the down low below the dots. You know, how are you going to play in the playoffs in there? Are you going to be scared? Do you need time and space, or can you play in a phone booth? Max Domi can play in the phone booth down there. And I'm not talking about like, oh, he's got this insane skill that he can just walk around and do whatever the fuck he wants. But he's got the ability to go into the offensive zone and just get down below the dots and fight for space, fight for positioning, not be afraid of any of that kind of stuff. He goes in there with that line with Matthews and he can get the puck back. He can be a a, a retriever. And he can find the best goal scorer in the NHL. A guy scores 60 tonight. Then you have Burt on the other side. Burt is just pure chaos. Watch Bertuzzi shift by shift by shift. People post memes. They post these clips and they're like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Why does he play like that? Yeah, he's a psychopath, man. Like watch the way he plays in the best way possible. He's got he's got body parts everywhere. He's got stick everywhere. Like he's flailing around. He falls down on the ice. He bumps into guys. He is he goes into the corner battle and he's poking at pucks and he, he looks he looks just like he looks like the wacky inflatable arm flailing tube tube man from Family Guy where it went the way he plays. Or it's just things are everywhere. Think it is sheer chaos when you're watching this guy and it's amazing because he's skilled he's tough and he's smart and he wins battles and he's able to find Domi he's able to find Matthews he's a good playmaker himself and he goes to the front of the net and he makes space and you know what you need that you haven't had on that line with Matthews in the last couple of years is what you saw out of him uh, over the last little while where yeah, BRGR saying Bert is the never let them know your next move player. That's what he is, man. Like those TikToks where like random shit happens. Every, like every time you turn and it's like you, you had no idea what the next thing was going to be. That's Bertuzzi where you're just like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And it's not in a bad way. It's just like you watch him shift by shift. If you could just chart the movement that this guy's making shift by shift, you'd be like, this, this is the most chaotic shift ever. And it was, but in the best way possible. He goes to the front of the net, pisses people off, creates space, develops screens for Matthews. You've had this problem every year where where Matthews is not able to get any time or any space when he's out there, and then the rest of the line is just kind of fucked there because they don't have like that support system around him in those roles. Those guys are playoff players, man. Those guys are playoff players, and those are guys who are going to make a difference in the playoffs alongside Austin Matthews. Then you go to the second line. Okay, you got Marner, Tavares. They can just kind of be Batman and Robin, do their thing, fly around, create opportunities, all that stuff. And then you go to your third line, at where all, or even on that second line, you keep McMahon there. McMahon, hard on the four check, gets in there, hits guys, finishes checks, pretty good defensively, pretty responsible defensively, will block shots, and he can go to the net and he can score. Perf. That's all I'm looking for. Third line, Nylander. I don't know. You, what do you get? Yarn croak there. Nice. Nice kind of takes on the McMahon role, the Bertuzzi role. 
Nylander goes onto that line and he can just be the man. He can be the guy who skates around, goes nuts, go, you know, goes coast to coast, and he doesn't have to worry about, oh, that's John Tavares, I need to get him the puck. Oh, that's Austin Matthews, I need to get him the puck. No, 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 no. Nylander, you're the guy. Go be the guy. Just fucking rip it up. And that's so much harder to play against when you've got William Nylander and Matthew Nyes on your set, on your third line. How is another coach supposed to look at them and say, yeah, well, we're going to be able to defend that, no problem. Like, no, 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 that's pure chaos every single time. We, I appreciate that. Uh, 50 likes here on the stream. Thank you guys so much for supporting. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, like, whatever you got to do. If you're watching on Twitter, uh, won't see the uh, won't see the questions or anything in real time. So head on over to the YouTube. That's the best place for me to be able to answer everything. Uh, I think we had a little bit of a problem where we went late on YouTube to start. Uh, did not catch that, so I apologize. But I think we're good. You didn't really miss much other than just kind of explaining what the uh, what the scoring was. Curtis Joseph saying Nylander on the third line, laughing, and then says ninety six points and counting. I mean, Curtis, in reality, uh, you must not have been listening, brother. I don't know what to say, brother. <laughs> Broke it down pretty clearly about how it's, A, not really a third line, and uh, and B, you, could not have to, you don't have to play them in a third line role where they play 10 minutes. You can still find 15 for them or something, you know? You can play Matthews for 20. You can play the other line for 15. You can play his line for 15. You you find minutes here and there that you can utilize for those guys. So it's not uh, it's not a third line, really. And I think it opens things up for him if those are his line mates. Plus, the one thing that people need to remember here as well is that if you go with those guys, you can change after. You can move Marner up to the first line. You can move uh, Nylander up to the second line. Like You can move guys around. But if you just load your top two lines and things aren't working to start the season uh, to start the playoffs, what's the next move? Because you you basically have you've gone to your loaded lineups and they didn't work. So then you go to those and it doesn't work. Now what? What like what's the next situation? Fifty likes on the stream. Thank you very much. Uh, smelling salts. Um. These ones say bought for boxing, hockey, EMS, and police. All right. These ones, uh, um, these ones smell different. They got a, the other ones all kind of smell the same. Those ones smell like, um, like a oh those ones kind of smell like a like a eucalyptus but like real strong oh also this got brought up in the chat and i saw a comment um you guys are fucked you guys you guys you guys messed with jason on the stream the other day and told him every 10 likes are you guys out of your minds what the hell was that? This poor guy is sitting here. He's filling in. He's doing the stream. He's trying. He's trying to do a good thing for for me, for the Leafs Nation people, for you guys to give you guys a post game show. And you guys are you guys are telling this guy he's got to do t every ten likes. Are you guys insane? A poor guy, six and a third. What you were the one telling him ten likes? Handshake. What was that? You guys, you guys are insane. I, I get a text after. He's like, 10 likes? That's crazy. I had to do the salts. I'm like, no. I saw the I saw a comment in the chat. And like, yeah, I think it was Phenom commented like, yeah, was, they made him do it every 10 likes. I'm like, brothers, 10 likes? The guy's brain was going to be on fire. What the heck was that? I can't. I couldn't believe it. Ten likes. You guys are insane. Assholes. <laughs> Love you all, but assholes. Crazy. Poor guy. Keep hitting like seventy now. Keep going here. Let's get to a hundred. But what the hell?
Poor Jason, man. Oh my god, poor guy. Mur murderers, yeah, you scumbags in the chat. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about Matthew sixty. Let's talk about Matthew sixty. Also, yes, appreciate Jason for doing the show. Uh, oh, Phenom there, quickly saying before I get to Matthews, could you do a show from the Leafs game? Uh, or not possible. Uh, I can, it's just not as good of a show for you guys. Like, I would have to do them, I, I would have to do them on my phone, and I don't think that that works as well. Like, it's just not as good quality. I can't really read the chat as well. It's a little bit more difficult. You know, I, I don't seem to get, uh, get into the things as much or able to get into everything as much, so... Uh, it, it just kind of it's it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, Palm face you and Jason Jason should do a po uh, post game collab together. Definitely. Uh, I'm gonna have more guests and stuff on here, especially into the playoffs. Like you know, every single game in the playoffs is way more important than what we're at with the regular season now breaking things down. So we'll have more. We'll have more guests. We'll have more people come through. We'll continue to take calls. Uh, but yeah, Brett saying so much more immer uh, immersion on PC. Like, yeah, it's so much easier for us to just have these conversations, read the chat, interact, make sure we hit everything um, when I'm on my computer. Uh, so yeah, not not as much like, a, oh yeah, do it from, from the game. Like, if I do it from the game, I would have to do it on my phone. Luckily, now I do live downtown, so potentially opportunity to like go to a game and then just rip home after and start to stream a little bit later, but um doing it from a game like until until you guys get us to a uh, hundred thousand subscribers and and the leafs are like hey we want you in the building doing this um which it's on you guys at that point i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna come here and do the streams the best i can but it's kind of kind of goes on you guys at that point you got to keep subscribing then yeah yeah, then maybe we could get there one day. Thanks to everyone who liked and subscribed. Brett saying, uh, playoff beard. This was a playoff beard for... This was a playoff beard for my men's league. You know what? Briefly, I got to bring this up. Uh... Wow. Um, we got a super chat here. Phenom. Um, appreciate that a lot. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Phenom says, well, on behalf of chat and for all you do for us, I have two ticks for four, eight, uh, against Pitt. I'd like to give to you if that doesn't mess with your work schedule. I mean... Guys, you don't I hope you all understand. I do appreciate the super chats. I appreciate you guys sending stuff. Uh I appreciate the offers there. The offer there. Uh you guys don't ever have to offer stuff to me. Um Thank you very much. That does mean a lot. That is very very cool. Uh Phenom will chat. <laughs> we'll chat, but send me a, maybe send me a message if you can on Twitter or something and I'll talk to you, but uh very, very much appreciate that and appreciate the super chat. Thank you. I, again, you guys don't ever have to send super chats. It's I'm not never going to ask for them uh, or anything like that. I, I, it is appreciated always. So thank you. But um, <laughs> thanks. Six and a third says, "Can I go with you, Zach?" <laughs> Six and a third. Oh man. Uh, as long as we could talk about uh, Bertuzzi and how you wanted to trade him, if that can come up. Uh, keep hitting that like button here, guys. Um, Phenom. Um, I live in Texas and went to a Leafs game when they were in Dallas, but Toronto's a little far. Wanted to thank you for all you do. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Yeah, I guess Texas is a little far from, from Toronto to do. Uh, you know what? We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> Tammy, Zach, I never wanted to trade Bertuzzi. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> you guys are trolls here, by the way. Uh, also, no, no worries, Phenom. You're good. You did not put me on the spot. Uh, we'll figure it out. 
Okay. Let's talk about 60. Let's talk about 60. 60 goals in the National Hockey League twice. 60 goals in the NHL twice. Austin Matthews has now done it. Uh, that goal tonight, I mean, he was he was generating a bunch. I felt like he was all over things in the offensive zone, but every time he came close, it was just like a little disconnected. The pass was, you know, an inch or two inches away from where it could have been to be like that ideal spot for him to be able to score. It was just missing or his opportunities, he would just miss. The puck would just bounce over his stick, whatever it was. He was just missing those. He's not even 27 years old, as Jay Castro is pointing out, and he's got 60 in the NHL twice. Only nine players ever in the history of the game have scored 60 twice, and he also did it here tonight, the shortest amount of games since Mario in 95-96. That's what they brought up on the broadcast. This guy's a beast, man. I, I love that first line. I love those guys playing together, and that goal tonight just shows, too, like everything Matthews has done. Uh, and is able to do uh, we saw him here get a bunch of just far away opportunities where he was taking regular Austin Matthews shots we saw rebounds we saw deflections in front we saw all these different things but that final goal is him going to the right spot being in the right place at the right time puck comes to him where he gets an opportunity where he steals it from Byram who has the broken stick gets in on the b-way UPL, who played an incredible game here tonight as well, makes a save. Matthews grabs the rebound, skates around, passes back to the defenseman, then heads to the net. Heads to the net to make sure he's in there so that he can either get a tip or he can get a rebound. The puck bounces to him. He just grabs it and is able to bury it into the empty net. And you could tell he was fired up. Like, he really, really wanted to score that 60. Probably felt like it took a little bit too long for him to get to that point. Like where, Or he felt like he was taking too long to get to that point. You know, in his standards or his kind of season, the way that it's gone, to have the lull that he did over the last little while and take that break to now get to 60 here, That was it was fun to see. It was fun to see him do that. I, I honestly think he's going to score 60 at least, minimum, three more times in his career. I think he touches. Honestly, that's not even like a hot take. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, three more times. At, at minimum like he's gonna get i think he gets 60 at least five times in his life uh i mean 60 is insanely hard to do but i just i i see five i see five plus like i see five plus 60 <clears throat> 60 goal seasons in his lifetime and i think they all come here in toronto too so pretty cool but that's 60 man uh to watch that happen to watch it happen in a leafs uniform holy fuck is that ever cool i don't even know is that like a hot is that a hot take is that a hot take? Oh, also, I wanted to ask you guys, because I told you why I missed, and I was talking about I grew the grew the beard for playoffs. You know, it was a it was a it was a tuna's playoff beard. We go to the finals, right? The team that we played in the finals was I th they were the first ranked team the entire regular season. I think they'd only lost a couple of games. We did beat them in the regular season, by the way, but they only lost like two or three games all year long. So we get to the finals. We're tied 4-4 going into OT. No one, no one scores in OT. We play five-minute OT. Then the commissioner says, hey, instead of a shootout, you guys do have the option of playing three-on-three. -three. You go another five-minute three-on-three. Or a shootout. You guys let us know their team gets final say. So we said, yeah, of course. We're gonna we're we're going three on three. We're here to play hockey, not do a skills competition. And they said they wanted to do shootout. It, am I am I out of my mind, or is that not a is that not like a a foul? That's that's a foul. That's a foul play by them to say we want to do a shootout. Who the hell does that? You can't choose the shootout. We're here to play hockey. They chose the shootout. They beat us in the shootout. I think we went four four shooters. They beat us in the shootout. Their last guy scored. We missed. And that was it. But, like, we lose in the finals on a shootout. If it was just the rule that it goes to a shootout, fair play. But it would still suck to lose in a shootout. But fair play. They chose the shootout. Who the hell chooses the shootout? That's what I'm saying. This is the finals. You can't do that. 
You can let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. Am I out of my mind for having that? Sorry for the men's league talk, but that was that was this has been bugging me for th like three days now. That's why Jason had to do the show on Thursday. Appreciate him filling in. Screw you guys for fucking with him the way you did, but also thank you guys for supporting him. But that's where I was on on uh, Thursday. It was the finals. I'm not gonna miss any more shows for the rest of the year. But like, what the heck is that? Give me five more at three on three, and we're doing we're choosing shootouts. Come on, can't do that. Thumbs down for that. Can't do that. That was a joke. That was a joke. All right, anyways, enough of that. No more no more men's league talk. But I, I had to get that off my chest. You know, that's insane, right? Like, it's it's the finals, boys. It's the finals. Tammy, thank you. Shootout, a skills competition. Correct. Thursday night, that happened. All right, anyways, enough of that. I just had to get that off my chest. That was pissing me off. You guys here on the show, you know, we talk Leafs, we talk everything, but you guys got it. You guys know there's a little bit of inside. You know how I, you know, I, we, we break things down. And I explain to you uh, a little bit about my personal and, and, and uh, you get to know me a little bit better. But um, what the fuck was that? Yeah. Shout out to Tunis. Back for the summer. We're all good there. But winter league, you know, 24, 24 games or whatever it was. You go to the finals and you play a fucking shootout. What the hell is that? Anyways. Anyways. Hey, check my stat line that game. Not it's just saying, check the game sheet. Uh, all right, let's get let's get back to tonight's game. Uh, there was a couple more things I wanted to talk about. First line was buzzing. I was real real happy with them. I think they created a bunch of opportunities. I I was actually pretty happy with the fourth line and what they did. Uh, it wasn't like like there was a couple of penalties. Uh, Dewar, um, trying to remember what the first one was. Oh, the holding in the corner offensive zone penalty like fuck you can't cannot have that i think it was a little tiny bit soft like but like it's also fully a penalty that i could see them just calling uh where it's like a little techie tack and you're like mm, yeah it was a penalty maybe you don't call it but it was it was kind of soft regardless he comes back on the ice after they've cleaned everything up he comes back on the ice after they've killed off his penalty there's a scramble in your own zone and he takes it and he just fires it straight out of that straight into the glass i'm like cannot be doing that cannot be doing that phenom bringing up and i think that's a good point he just had one of those nights that's kind of how it felt right it was just one of those nights for doer not the best uh but my god like can't have that. Outside of that, that fourth line, I do think that they did a pretty good job. Uh, I, I do think that they have been a lot better oh, since Reeves came back from injury, and I'm I'm impressed with uh, I, I'm impressed with kind of how they've turned it on and figured out how to be like a, a proper line. Like I, they've really turned things up. They've really changed how they've played and being reliable. And we saw some different opportunities. I believe it was in the first period there where it was like it was a full blown forty five second offensive zone shift the entire time in there. They created chances. You're getting tips in front. Revo seems to be moving well. Honestly, too, by the way, guys, shout out to Ryan Reeves for the back check that he had on the one play. It was in the second period, uh, where second period. I wrote down when it was, um, but Reeves flying back, no, first period, uh, Reeves flying back, somehow Jeff Skinner gets open at the blue line, while the whole Leafs team is up the ice, he's in on like a partial break, it turns into a two-on-one because the defenseman's able to get back, and as that pass goes to go across, which would basically send the Sabres in completely alone for a full breakaway opportunity against Ilya Samsonov, Ryan Reeves, like Ryan Reeves, the guy that we we're looking at like, oh, he can't skate, he can't play, you can't put him on the ice, Ryan Reeves is the guy making the back check, making an incredible defensive play and breaking it up, getting to the corner uh, and getting the puck back up the ice. Like the guy's just a hustle machine. Uh, I saw Nick tweet about like Cousins wanted to go nice at the end. It would have been kind of nice. But at the same time, we want to talk about guys protecting people. If you look back at what happened, Cousins gives him the cross check. Cousins gives him the slash. He turns around and uh, and Nyes is you know gives him a little bit of a stick. They're they're pushing. 
as soon as they as soon as they camera cuts to where it is revo is there being like no 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 you're not fighting nice like you're not fighting this kid on our team if you want to fuck around like i'm right here but you're not touching him you could think that that's soft by nice and i'm like okay whatever because yeah you say yeah you want you want him to fight you want him to show that but it's also like having ryan Rees is the reason that nice is never going like would never have to fight in that situation he can choose if he wants to uh, choose to if he wants to but he doesn't have to which is just it's nice to see a uh, couple other things to bring up: the Nylander miss, where he went, uh, he went all the way up the ice, cuts across the Sabres defenseman. It was him and McMahon. The guy takes away the pass opportunity to McMahon. He cuts across, makes a move across, misses on the backhand. I think it went just wide of the post, or maybe nicked the post, the outside. Like this guy's a fucking animal, man. William Nylander has been buzzing. He has some bad plays. He has some blackout. What the hell is going on? Situations, but for the most part, Willie, absolute weapon. Like he is, he was real good more than he is not. And I gotta, I gotta give him, I gotta give him credit because I think he had a pretty good game tonight. He generated a bunch of opportunities, and he was able to, uh, to, to uh, get the Leafs that one with the pass across the Tavares, but. You know, couple what the hell Nylander scratch your head moments, but couple holy shit. Um, six, you wanted to trade Willie Zach. And saying I wanted to trade Reeves. Uh yeah, Reeves at the beginning was like, if you can trade him, if you're gonna cause basically it was like, hey, this guy's an unplayable. Yeah, you're still looking at it, and I do still believe that 1.3 is too much for Reeves. Like, I don't think that there's any denying that. I I that probably did say if you could get out of that contract, get out of the contract. So that's on me. I don't remember saying trade uh, trade Willie. Yeah, Phenom. Zach's biggest issue is always the contract. It's It always was and still will be. Like, 1.3. But as Debo says, and I talked about, 1.3 for Team Chem. Like, you kind of did pay that, and it kind of seems to be working. Like, this team actually lo- seems to love each other. Uh, talked about Holmberg. Talked about the fourth line. Um, talked about the third line a little bit there. Defensively, I didn't really have, like, too much to say about the guys. There were some goddamn brain-dead plays that went on. Uh, just passes to nobody. Passes to the wrong spot. Passes that were not connecting. Um... There wasn't really too much like, oh, wow. There wasn't too much that I looked at tonight of like what was going on where you just weren't involved in it at all. But (laughs) McCabe over the glass. Uh, Benoit's penalty, I don't get, I don't. Like, again, Benoit's penalty probably is where I look at with doers where it's like, was his penalty <laughs> okay was it technically a penalty yep For, yeah it was it was interference but as they brought up on the broadcast and i do agree with it kind of seemed like it was continuous you know like he puts the pucks through his legs he pushes them he pushes them i think it's just the fact that he falls over that makes it uh that makes it a penalty if he doesn't fall over, I don't think that that thing's being called at all. Like, they're trying to fight through the pucks right behind Benoit there. For pretty much every other guy, like, that's a play that happens all the time where you're going to get into that kind of contact. You're going to push back and forth, fight for, for positioning, fight to get in um, past the guy while you're trying to get to the puck. But, like, <laughs> I mean, that's a weak call, man. I watched that and was just like, no, we can't. we can't be doing this. We cannot be doing that. Come on. Anyways, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about Samsonov before we get out of here with some of the uh, great for, with the play of the game, with the grade of the game, and talk about our bet for tonight. Samsonov, what a stud, man! Um, I saw a tweet that was sent out. I'm gonna try to pull it up here quickly. I I did lose it um, on the screen, unfortunately, but there it is no but that's not the one but anyways i'll find it um mark masters Ilya samsonov posts a shout out in his first game in buffalo since toronto's 9-3 loss here on december 1st quote i don't remember uh that last time i was here 
uh, last time, nine goals. Fuck that shit. I feel good right now. That's a long time ago. I don't remember. Great for Ilya Samsonov to play the way that he has um, since returning. Like, he was a guy that we were looking at, and myself included, as like, this guy legitimately just can't play. Uh, he He's not going to be able to stick around. He's not going to be able to, to be with the team uh, throughout the remainder of this year. But Samsonov takes some time away, gets his mentals back, is able to kind of, able to kind of, you know, just shut everything out. Uh, it, there it is, James Myrtle. Ilya Samsonov, an incredible 15 3 and 1 with a 9168 percentage in his last 19 games, turning into one of the best stories in the league. Like, this guy could legitimately win the Masterton at this point. Uh, the perseverance, story of perseverance, coming back, fighting through something. You know, he was dealing with mentals. He he couldn't get things together. He couldn't uh, he, he he couldn't make a save for the life of him. And he takes that time away and comes back and goes fifteen three and one in his last nine uh, nineteen with a nine one six save percentage. That is ridiculous. Like that is incredible from from your guy with uh with Ilya Samsonov. He played insane tonight. Like, this is a game that Ilya Samsonov, if he's not doing what he does, you're probably not winning this game, and yet you got a fucking shutout from him. A shutout. Like, the guy goes 34 for 34. He made insane save after insane save. He made timely saves. He made big moment saves. He made momentum saves. He he made saves he should never have been able to make, and he just kept doing it, and it was amazing what this guy did tonight. Good for him, man. You want to fight for the net? Joseph Wall did not have the best week, and that is this is like a step towards. You got 10 games left. You want to win that net over. You're gonna have to start to you're gonna have to start to clean things up, and you're gonna have to say why you show why you deserve to be the goalie. If you're in the chat and you haven't, <laughs> Tammy Samson off the Sam Burglar. I don't want to use the Hamburglar nickname in any sense because he fell off a cliff, so I'm not putting that that voodoo on Sammy here. Um. What else we got? Oh, uh, if you're watching right now and you haven't hit like 18 away, 18 away from 100, hit that like button. Hit the like button while you're watching. I appreciate everyone who is supporting the show. I appreciate everyone who's watching the channel, who's subscribed, but we're 18 away. Hit the like button. Let's get there. Let's get 100 before we wrap up. One more thing before we get to our final stuff, and that would be our bet 99 best bet. Look, I was texting Amal during the game about what was going on. You know, we've lost a couple here in a row. I got to turn this around. I got to get us back into, uh, I got to get us. <laughs> Wrong button. What is going on on my computer today? I, I, I got like my mic settings. It's just not even showing the volume level right now. No idea why. That's that's brand new. So if my audio was peaking tonight, I can see it in my streaming software. But like my mic system, I don't know what just happened. Like today, <laughs> today I tried to do, uh, today I tried to do the pregame preview, and I'm like, I it's like audios everywhere. The I I got I got. In, in my chat, I got animations playing at random times. I try to go live here tonight. I click go live, and somehow I'm just not on YouTube. And even though I've sent it there, like this was just this was I had I had a Connor Dewar stream of all the of all streams that to have tonight. I had a Connor Dewar stream. Like I think we were on radio at the right time. If you're listening on radio, shout out. I, What's up, everyone listening on radio? I legitimately have had the Connor Dewar stream of of tough streams. Like this was this was the Connor Dewar game. What he did out there against Buffalo tonight, the Pontus Holmberg game that wasn't that good tonight. That's what I had as a stream. I apologize. I try to bring the best show that I can, but my God, I was a I was a I was a disaster uh, to get this one going. Apologies. You now follow this one up after I missed the missed the game the other night too. Like. God, I got I got to be better. You know what? That's on me. I'm going to take accountability. I've learned my lessons and I'm going to use it to be better going forward. Let's talk about the bet. Uh shout out to our friends at Bet99. 
Uh, shout out to our friends at Bet99 uh, who are sponsoring the show. You know, we're trying to take money from them there. They know that. They're okay with that. They're saying, you know what? You, Zach, bring us your best. See if you can take money from us. We, we're still up on the season, but we went a full unit bet on Max Domi. Anytime assist, $100 to win 160 here in this game tonight. Uh, we went Max Domi to record an assist. I still, I still think it was a good bet. It lost, but I still think the process, the thought was there. Like you know what, you know what happens in, in theory. If you're betting, if you're betting a Max Domi at anytime assist at uh, at plus one sixty, it's an implied pro- probability of thirty eight point five percent. Now, the way I broke this one down, and the reason I was looking at it this way is that thirty eight point five percent throughout the whole year of 82 games of just his entire body of work probably makes sense. But I think 38.5% probability on a line with Austin Matthews is not accurate. I think 38.5% probability as a guy who's this insane disher, also playing with Bertuzzi, who's able to score, also a guy who's playing on the power play. Like I think that that's just wrong. I don't think that that number makes sense for him there. So... Um, for me, it's just like, no, I, I'm not, I'm not com- like I got, I'm going to make that bet every single day of the week. Max told me anytime assist plus 160, like I'm taking advantage of that number and I'm making the bet. They had a couple of opportunities tonight. Max Domi seemed pretty good uh, with that line, like generating some stuff. They had a couple really good chances that he was involved in. They just couldn't bury. Uh, they just couldn't bury throughout most of the game. And I think a lot of it was that UPL played incredible. But you know what? <laughs> I mean, just like tonight's stream, I got to be better. I got to start winning some bets. I appreciate our friends at Bet99. Thank you for sponsoring the show. But I'm coming for vengeance. Like, this tonight was your, Bet99, this tonight was your 9-3 victory over us. I'm Ilya Samsonov, and I'm coming back to your barn, and I'm shutting you out. I'm going, I'm making 34 saves, and I'm shutting you out, and we're getting things back in the right direction. We're getting things back in the right direction here. What? Make sure to watch the game previews that go out before the game starts. Uh, they, they come out usually. I try to get as much information as possible. So sometimes they're coming out anywhere between like 12 to 2 o'clock. Today I struggled finding a bet, so it pushed it back a little bit later. I think it came out closer to 5 today is when I put it up. But I, I also had some technical issues with my computer. Um. This was a this was a tough this is a tough tough one for us, but the bets come out in those, so make sure to watch the game previews. Ten likes away as well. Let's go. We got two of our final things before we can wrap up the stream. Uh, and thank you to our friends at Bet99 for continuing to sponsor. If you haven't already, you should be signed up at Bet99, your local Canadian sportsbook and online casino built by Canadians for Canadians. With top-tier customer service, fast payouts, and smooth transactions, Bet99 should be your choice of sportsbook. Now, you must be 19+. plus. Please play responsibly. Available to persons in Ontario only. Uh, thank you to everyone who watches. Thank you to our friends at Bet99. But make sure to head on over there and, and, uh, and su- sign up at Bet99. Support the show here for myself. Let's get to our final stuff. Let's get to our play of the game. Play of the game, drop yours in the chat there as well. Play of the game, uh, for me, it's just Matthew 60. There was some nasty ones uh, with the Nylander pass to Tavares, skating the puck up the ice like that, the close call that he had where Nylander went coast to coast and just missed, but it's Matthew 60, man. Yeah, you score 60 twice in your career. You're one of only nine players in NHL history to score 60 twice. There's going to be more, obviously. You know, McDavid probably will do it again. I wouldn't be surprised if Pasternak gets it, gets it again, but... Matthew scores 60. It's, you know, do you guys, do we realize like how fun it is to watch a guy in a Maple Leafs uniform be the best goal scorer in the NHL scoring 60 goals? Like 40 is an off year. 40 fucking goals is an off year. Phil Kessel would score 40 and we'd be going nuts being like, oh my God, can't believe we have a 40 goal score. This guy scored 60 twice. He's scoring 50 multiple times. He scores 40 and we're like, oh, bad season, bad season. Wasn't good. 60 goals. I don't care how it happened. 
I don't care how it went down. 60 goals for Austin Matthews. That's my play of the game. Like, that is my play of the game. We got a tweet here. Debo just pointed it out. I went and found this here. We got a tweet. Max Domi. Leafs Nation was buzzing tonight. What an atmosphere. What a night for 34. Huge W. Best crowd of the year. We got a tweet. We got a super tweet, boys. We got a super tweet. What a night for 34. Huge W. Best crowd of the year. This guy's got the passion, ladies and gentlemen. Brad, get it done. Get this guy signed. Get him signed. Best crowd of the year is also sad. Best crowd of the year is a sad state of affairs for this Leafs team because you got to fucking dial in here, brothers. If we're going to the game for the, for the rest of the season, you better get fired up. You better get fired up going into the arena. Get loud. Get loud in there. I, I don't want to hear about the crowd in Buffalo was the best crowd of the season. Get loud in Scotiabank. Go nuts in Scotiabank. But we got a tweet. <laughs> we got a super tweet. Get loud in Scotiabank. A couple more things before we finish this one off. Uh, last one here, I guess. Uh, you guys, while you're, while you're in the chat. Um, <laughs> while you're in the chat, send your grades as well. But let's... Uh, let, let's get to our grades of the game. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Grades of the game for me is... Ooh, wow. Okay, mine's gonna line up with some people in the chat here. It's an A-. minus. You went on the road. Uh, you got a shutout from Samsonov. Your penalty kill was 6-for-6. Six six. Like, we can't forget that stuff. You found a way to get it done. How many times do we look at games and say... Deserve to win, lost. Dummy them on the deserve to win a meter, lost the game. S smoked them in shots on goal, smoked them in chances. We were we were the better team. Didn't win. You did it tonight. You showed up here tonight in Buffalo on the road on a Saturday night, and you beat the Sabres three to nothing. You got goals from Tavares. You got a goal from from uh, Matthews. Like, you get 60, you get Nylander passing, um, passing Matt Sundin, <laughs> names struggling to come out there. You get Nick Robertson scores, you get a nice play from Matthew Nyes, this, the shutout from Samsonov, who continues to be an absolute stud. It was the Sabres, it's a team who's not going to make the playoffs, Mike there saying it's the Sabres, we were sloppy. You won, you found a way to win. Some negatives would be a little bit sloppy, yes, but I don't. I didn't feel like in this game it was complete out to lunch, complete domination by Buffalo as well. By the way, seven likes. Get your likes in now. Get your likes in now. Uh, and on top of that, it's every time we play the Sabres, they seem to dominate us. Like, they seem to dominate uh, this Leafs team. And it's pathetic. So as you guys are saying... Oh, well, it was the Sabres. Oh, they're not that good. You should win this game. You got up for it. You got up for it. You played Buffalo, and you were able to win. You played Buffalo, and you were able to win in Buffalo. I'm just going to go with an A-. I think it's a little bit... <laughs> Brett's on fire in the chat tonight. I'm not going to lie. Brett's on fire with these comments. Um, I think it's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a pump-up grade where maybe it's not quite an a minus maybe it's a little bit shorter maybe it could have been a b plus but i'm willing to give it the a minus here i'm willing to be a soft grader and go to the a minus because i think that there's a lot of good stuff that happens here tonight that you can take away from you still were missing marner you still were missing riley Lilligrid, yarn croak uh you didn't have edmondson playing this game there were there were some there were some other areas where it's like hey we could we couldn't should be better but a minus for me. It's an A minus for me. If you guys are watching, haven't already, hit the like button. Five away. Let's see if we can get get it to get to the uh get to the hundred mark before we close out. Four likes. Come on, guys. Four likes. But that's pretty much it for tonight's show. You guys 
you guys got to get at, get those likes in as I as I clean this one up here and, and recap everything. We get 60 from Matthews. We get Nylander, who's on the hunt for 100 career, 100 points in a single season for the first time in his career. Be uh, Beat Marner to the 100-point mark. Matthews, fastest time to get to 60 or fastest games played to get to 60 since 95-96 with Mario Lemieux. Johnny T on the board is 1100th game. He scores 450 his 451st career goal. TJ Brody plays in his 900th game. Ilya Samsonov now goes on the season to uh, as as we saw Masters tweet out or Myrtle tweet out, excuse me, 15 3 and 1 his last 19, which would include bef- uh, when he came back from his uh, little hiatus from the team. He's been on fire here now. All credit in the world to Ilya Samsonov for turning things around. Two more likes, guys. Two more likes. One more. You know what? Let's get him out. Hit the hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Smelling salts. Don't ever scum Jason like that again, telling him every 10 likes. Disgusting act by you guys in the chat. Disgusting act. I had my Connor Dewar game. But you all watched, you liked, you subscribed. And for that, I thank you. Here's to the salt. Oh. There you go. Oh. The super salt Brett. Thanks to everyone who watched. This has been... Game number 73 of the Toronto Maple Leafs regular season defeating the Buffalo Sabres here tonight. Three to nothing. Moving to 42, 22, and 9 on the season. Thanks so much to everyone who watched. We'll be back here Monday night following the Leafs game against the Panthers. We'll see you guys then. And as always, keep believing.